you are watching Well of the Fathers. But if you are growing spiritually, like the song that said, Give me you, that will be your desire. That anytime you go before your feet of God, you are not asking for clothes, you are not asking for money, you are not asking for anything. You are just saying, Lord, give me you. Until the church come to that level of coming before God, before the throne of grace, not for what they want, but what they want becomes the life of Christ. Are you hearing me? But when you are asking God, give me you, you are actually saying, give me the entire life. Give me the abundant life. Give me the, the, the endless life. Give me the life that you possess. I tell you the truth. If you can assess his life, you will assess eternity. Are you with me? And he, he did the example. He put some four guys here. This one had a car key. This one had money. This one has that. This one here is there. They all had the physical things that perish. And he said, when the scripture for Jesus is seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added, what we do in church is that we seek the things that need to be added. You know what we do? I went to preach in the church and they were and they were praying and they took notice of every prayer they prayed. It had nothing to do with God. You see me? I was sitting down. I didn't pray. The church were looking at me. This pastor what they pray. Because you were praying one, I cannot pray. There are certain prayers I cannot pray. Are you understanding? Or the believers are able to draw a line between what they can do and what they do. Praise God. Hallelujah. And he said, how do you attract the benefits of the kingdom? He said, desire to grow. Desire to know him. Somebody said, desire to know him. Desire to know him. Can I quote Daniel for you? And I'm just going to Go through the scriptures. The Bible said, they that know. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody, do you know? Yeah. Or Sunday I was telling the church, I said, when you grow beyond believing, you are becoming a son. Do we grow beyond belief? Do you actually grow beyond belief? Yes. There's a difference between believing and knowing. I don't know whether you are you getting me? Is there a difference between believing and yeah. when you know you know? Praise God. Right. It's a daddy in this church. Who, who has a song here? Yeah. Let me demonstrate it. Okay, bring your daughter. Permit me to do this. This child may not understand what I'm saying right now, but when he grows up, he will understand. Come, come, come. Hello, babe. Do you believe that this woman is your mother? Yeah. You believe? She has a meal. <laughs> that is the scripture you read, sir. That a child, though he be the heir of the kingdom, he had everything in his possession. He's put on that word a tutor. This child will grow to know that this woman is no longer going to be believing. Are you understand? That is why what Paul when the Bible says Paul said that we may know him. Somebody said no. No. Can we enter into this this mystery? I'm trying to avoid it. Say no. 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 There's a difference between no and believe. Believe is a step of entering into the realm of knowing. Yes, I don't know whether you understand. Yes, to believe is just like say I'm born again. There are times you will say, oh, no, you say, you go beyond just being born again. You know, that is what the devil has said in the church, I'm born again, I'm born again, but you never went beyond the born again. So when I was teaching the, the, the tabernacle of Moses, I began to understand what being born again is about. I realized that some people can actually operate in the outer court, but they have never been to the blazing altar. Are you understanding me? I'm born again, but you have not started the journey into the kingdom. Are you following me? The journey into the kingdom, into the holies, from the blessing altar into the holies that takes you before the menorah and the, and the showbread that leads you into the holies of holies. These are the process of growth that God has aligned for us. But church has cleaned up 
We religion, we clean up just by your hair. Don't wear earrings. Wear toe to toe. Your hand has to be, your shirt has to be here. Wear slippers. Look agar. Don't rock a good cream. Don't wear a good shirt. I remember those days, early 80s, when a believer goes to buy this kind of shoe. They say, brother, repent. Go back to the cross. Are you sure that you are born again? Praise God. Are you with me? Or time has passed. I will say the, the mysteries that have been hidden in ages past. Somebody say hidden. Are being of faith through the apostles and through the prophet. That is why when you hear, I want to believe, let me tell you, the level of men coming into this message is becoming awesome. That it's no longer the message of meat and loaf or fish and loaf. People are getting tired. A woman came to our church and said, I heard you preaching. He said, I've heard you preach. I always come around when you are holding service and I'm standing and preaching. He said, I decided to come to be part of this gospel. Are you following? Tell somebody it is time to grow. It is time to grow. Growth is the product of knowing. That is why Daniel never said he that believed in his God shall do explosion. What did he say? Respond now. He that does what? Okay, can we go to the nitty gritty of what knowing means? Don't permit me to know. If I said I know you, it's different if you say I recognize you. You know that a lot of people recognize Christ, but they don't know him. They recognize that Jesus died on the cross. The scripture says, sir, even the devil believes. And does what? Tremble. But the devil has not come to know him. That is what he does not want you. He wants you to end up in believing. He does not want you to come to the realm of knowing. If I know, I am persuaded. When you are persuaded, you come to a resolve of what you know. What you know will determine the stature. What you know will determine the substance that you are made of. Are you are you working with me this afternoon? What you know, the God you know. I was telling the church. I said sometimes when you go to places, they say, they say go and do KYC. Do you know what they say in business? Huh? What KYC? Know your customers. I was telling the church. Know your God. KYC your God. Don't allow man only tell you about your God. That was what the difference between the very church and the other churches. When they hear, they go back to investigate. One of the issues with the church today, that after your pastor has finished preaching, as you pass through that gate, it's done. You never go back. Because when you came to church, you didn't even come with a Bible, you came with a phone. I said, Pastor, yes, there is a Bible in my phone. I've always said this that when I sometimes I come to church altar and I said, put your Bible on your church. Then you put what on your church? What do you put there? Phone. phone. What is inside your phone? Instagram. Facebook. WhatsApp. Huh? TikTok. And I know. Put your hands together and celebrate Jesus. Alright. Let me say this before I go. The new being, oh God, I want to go into that. The new being that was created at the Garden of Eden, still exists. But it was squashed. It was kept in dark. But you are seeing the light. I thought somebody would say amen. Amen. See, I'm seeing the light. I'm seeing the light. How do you get the light? Your pastor said, let, let me try and see if I can pick up some of the things he said. The Bible says in him was life. And the life became what? The light. light. Okay. And the light shines. You know when you say darkness, you know when, when we use these words, what comes to us is the physical thing. We should learn to bypass the physical. When it talks about darkness, it actually talks about lack of knowledge. Are you understanding? He talks about the darkness in our heart. The, the, the craftiness. 
I'm trying to find something. The idols that are within our heart. The Bible says when the life